Spotify, the app with the entire history of recorded music that you only use to listen to four songs that you liked in high school. Spotify and other streaming services have made listening to music as easy as shoplifting from a Walgreens. Yeah, you walk out with the thing, all that happens is a beeping sound. And that's why we love streaming, right? I love it. And you probably love streaming too. But you know who doesn't love it as much? A lot of the musicians you're actually listening to. Yeah. The question is, why? Well, let's find out in another edition of If You Don't Know, Now You Know. Streaming is a huge part of our lives now. The two most important events on the calendar at this point are probably your birthday and the day Spotify wrapped tells you how basic your musical taste was that year. In fact, it's so much a part of our lives that it's hard to remember that things used to be very different and not so long ago. The internet has changed so many aspects of media consumption, but few have had a more tumultuous relationship with these changes than the music industry. CDs became the standard medium in the 1990s. At the same time, home computers were becoming more commonplace. Software like Napster paved the way for a new era of piracy. CD sales plummeted as more and more people logged on. With the introduction of the iPod, and MP3 players, the industry did see a boost from digital downloads, but it wasn't enough to make up for the dwindling physical format sales. The breakthrough came in 2011. Instead of buying and owning songs and albums, we started listening to ads or paying monthly fees in exchange for access to, essentially, all the music in the world. Online streaming music became an $11 billion industry, making up 56% of global music industry revenues in 2019. Spotify has dominated the streaming music industry with about 130 million premium subscribers worldwide. In 2017 alone, Spotify users streamed over 40 billion hours of content. Damn, 40 billion hours? You think in that amount of time humans could finish Spotify? Hell, you could finish sounds. After 40 billion hours, you've heard everything from Kanye to the sound of six squirrels having a knife bite. Or maybe that's still Kanye. But the change that brought us to this point happened so quickly. And you know who I feel worst for? Is all those people with huge CD collections. Because you realize overnight, they went from music aficionado to creepy hoarder. You wanna see my CDs? And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I like streaming way better than CDs. And I think it's much better than downloading the music illegally. You remember those days? Like when it was Napster and all of those? That shit was the Wild West. Every file you downloaded was a mystery. Okay, well, either this is gonna be who let the dogs out or a video of a man spreading his butthole open. And moment of truth. Oh, oh, thank goodness, it's just the butthole. So streaming has been the best thing to happen to the music industry since the government created LSD. But even as these services have arguably saved music, they're not exactly sharing the wealth. Even though in America, people are spending more money than ever before on music, musician pay is at an all-time low. While the music industry reportedly made a whopping $43 billion in 2017, the bands and artists themselves only walked away with a mere 12% of the cut. Spotify pays close to 70% of its revenues to the people who own the rights to the music. That's usually the recording labels. The amount artists receive on a single play is minuscule. On Spotify, that number is somewhere around 0.004 cents per play. Dozens of young artists coming to me on Twitter every day going, I've got however many million plays, I have 200,000 monthly listeners, I do not make minimum wage. Aloe Black co-wrote the 2013 hit song, Wake Me Up. It quickly became one of the most streamed songs in Pandora's history. But in an article for Wired Magazine, Black wrote, in return for co-writing a major hit song, I've earned less than $4,000 domestically from the largest digital music service. $4,000 for a number one hit. Guys, you know the music industry is messed up when the guys singing your songs on the subway make more money off of it than you do. You realize if this keeps up, rappers are gonna have to start being real about how rich they are. Yeah, they're gonna be in the studio like, what's 50 grand to a mother 
like me, can you please remind me? Well, now that I think about it, that's more than 120% of my net worth. Because of post-tax, if I, if I look at my net versus my, yeah, that's, oh man. Now, Spotify says that it's actually good for small artists because it makes it so easy to discover new music. And yeah, I mean, exposure is great. If you're an artist, you want your work in front of as many people as possible. That's why Banksy is always doing his street art in big cities like New York and not in places no one goes to, like the break room at an Amazon warehouse. And most people probably think that if they discover some obscure new band and then listen to nothing else for weeks, then that band is gonna get all of the money that they pay to Spotify that month. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. The average listener, if you are listening to sort of 500 or 800 tracks a month, probably only about two bucks of your 10 bucks is going to the music that you listen to. Mm -hmm. The rest is going to music that you don't listen to. Spotify doesn't pay artists per stream. Instead, the company takes all of the money it earns and puts it into one pie. Then it uses a complex formula to divvy that pie up between the artists with those who get the most streams basically earning the most money. Meaning a band has to share a pie with the Drakes and Taylor Swifts and Ed Sheerans of the world, who, you can imagine, eat a lot of pie. How big of a song do you have to have to make like reasonable royalties off of streaming? Do you have to be Drake? You have to be Drake. Is that the answer? That's the answer. Whoa! You have to be Drake? Nah, people, that's asking too much. I don't know how many artists have the emotional range to be both the biggest pimp on the planet and also depressed because she won't text me back. But that's right. Even if you are way too cool to listen to the top 10 artists on Spotify, they still get most of your money. And the bands that you do listen to get almost none of it. Which is unfair to the musicians, and it's especially unfair to music snobs. Actually, I don't do pop music. I prefer indie bands. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, dude, you just paid for Ariana Grande's new fridge. And because the system is so messed up, artists are now trying to change it. Some want to renegotiate contracts with their record labels to give artists a bigger cut and more control over their music. Others want to make it so that artists get paid at least a penny per stream or change streaming royalties to work more like radio. And some artists, or just doing cool shit like this. In 2014, funk band Wolfpack capitalized on a Spotify loophole by asking users to stream its completely silent album, Sleepify, on repeat while they slept. Collecting 20 grand in royalties with songs like this one. Take a listen. You actually heard that right. The band later used the money to fund an admission-free tour for their fans before Spotify pulled the album. Now that is genius. An entire album of dead silence. Or as Mike Pence calls it, his sex playlist. It's time to hug mother, nudie nude. And you know what, props to their fans who streamed this album so many times that the band made $20,000 because it's a great idea. And the more I think about it, it's also a great album. Yeah, I can think of at least 10 coworkers who should definitely sing this at our next karaoke. Yes, Jordan, I'm talking to you. But obviously, gaming the system isn't a real long-term solution. You know, in fact, for now, maybe the most important thing for artists to do is just get the word out to their fans. So when we saw that the great Aloe Black is one of the singers who's been speaking out about this, we asked if he wanted to record an update to his hit song, I Need a Dollar. And that's exactly what he did.
But there's just one little thing that seems to be missing And now for someone from somewhere to pay me Come on and shake your 